this is my first day working at home for myself um, and we're trying new routines out ladies and gentlemen it is seven o'clock and I'm already at my computer seven o'clock until for about 30 minutes 45 minutes is gonna be like admin preparation getting ready for the day I do have to do things like every other day I need to have a shave um, I still have to brush my teeth but otherwise try and like uh, narrow down the scope of when I do jobs that aren't as important or excited. So try and time box planning, try and time box replying to emails, all that kind of shit. And now around eight o'clock, I haven't decided yet. I'm going to be iterating a lot on this like schedule and like how I um, split out what I'm going to do every day. Um, we're going to be iterating a lot over the first couple of weeks as I try and find my feet, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, one thing I am trying to do is trying to make sure that I get out of the house often. Um, it's going to be very easy for me to just basically roll out of bed and roll into the office. And that kind of, the distance between where I sleep and where I work every day is not very far at all. Um, in general, it's always good to obviously get out and about. And I need to get exercise, to be honest with you. So, so every day I'm going to try and go for, I'm converting my usual commute, my driving commute, which took about 45 minutes, into roughly not quite but roughly half an hour to 45 minutes depending on traffic and the like um, I'm converting that into two 30 minute brisk walks um, and I'm considering doing the same thing at lunchtime as well so I have an hour long lunch um, where I have my sandwiches and then go for another walk um, just to get out and about get some fresh air it's good for thinking it's good for problem solving um, it's good for other things, like I've got to go pick up some post out of the post office. So I'm rolling that into my commute uh, and I don't have to think about it or go out in the middle of the day. That's my plan of attack. Um, so in general, what I used to do was get up at six, uh, have a shower, have my breakfast, shave or um, do the washing up, depending on what, <laughs> which alternate day it is. Um, then I would go to uh, get dressed, drive to work, go to work. Now what I'm doing is, I'm waking up at six, um, having a shower, having breakfast, getting dressed, sitting down to my computer to fire out some emails, do some planning for the day. That's like one of the weirdest things about this is, this is the first day where I've kind of walked into the office, sat down and gone, right, what am I gonna do today? <laughs> Don't know. Um, which obviously when you go to work, you've got something to do usually um, every day. So that's not really a problem, but I'm sure that'll end soon <laughs> it's because people are like oh but you're so excited about this and i am super excited about it but it's not like it's happening immediately like even though i'm doing it now it's not like i just suddenly inherited a business i need to run you know i've got to build it <laughs> um but yeah so sit down planning emails so i've been researching who to um who i can try and sell to um and all that kind of stuff that kind of like admin jobs that i know i won't necessarily do in the middle of the day and then once i get back from my walk I'll sit down to some programming or some other kinds of work depending on what's relevant. Um, the good thing and the bad thing about this is I've got programming to do for Rad Spider and I've got other business related stuff to do. Now the business related stuff is things that I'm not necessarily as good at so it takes me longer um, and it feels less productive. And so up till now <laughs> I've been using it as an excuse to not basically not do much of it um, because I'd prefer to do programming. But I'm trying to use them all as like uh, to stop myself burning out. That's also what these works, are, these walks are for. To try and stop myself burning out. Um, I need to keep alternating what I'm doing, when, and all that kind of shit. So that's my plan, really. It's going to be interesting. Like it's just a big old experiment, really. To be honest, I'm going to try some things, see if it works. If it doesn't, try something else. Back home. And one of the things I do genuinely have to be careful about is over vlogging. Um, <laughs> in and around when I'm doing my walks. That's the one thing I've got to be semi-conscious about. Um, but no, I got, <laughs> also, as I'm walking around, I'm just like talking to people in a way. Yo mate, how's it going? I'm gonna be one of those guys, because I've got no <laughs> mates at home <laughs> and no workmates. So uh, I'm just gonna be one of them guys who just walks around the neighborhood talking to people. I need a dog, is what I'm saying. So my plan of attack for the day is, I'm gonna make myself a drink. I'm thinking about making a, filling my water bottle and then just take, having my water bottle upstairs rather than filling glasses. Um, one to stop me drinking too much juice uh, because if it's filled with water then it's a uh, thingy and also two to uh, try and keep my uh, keep me from like coming up and downstairs all the time um, but having said that getting up and moving around is a good thing my plan of attack now is to release the latest updates to my website um, I did 
Uh, I did a pass through over some of the wording. I've added different pricing options um, to services um, and things like that, which basically mean, I don't know why I'm doing this. I've just filled that up. That's not fridge water. Yeah, I've, I've made some content uh, changes to the site. Um, and um, well, and changes to like the pricing and stuff. So what my plan is this morning is to release the latest version of that um, and to release my blog post uh, announcing some of those changes. I'm then going to play around with um, uh, generating some content for, hang on. Play around with some content generation um, for um, emailing people. Uh, and then is there something else I wanted to do this morning? Update LinkedIn and stuff. And then I'm going to be researching, yeah, researching that shit. Wrong finger. It's that finger. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm like, I've uploaded, updated my site, um, uploaded the new blog post. I'm waiting a little bit before I start publishing it on social media, um, just to hit lunchtime a bit more, I think. Um, and I just thought I'd, give, I'd pass through LinkedIn because I'm going to use that to publish my website. I was like, I need to update this. I'm trying to figure out what I can write about my last job. So it was kind of a weird role <laughs> where like I effectively inherited a new technology stack that they hadn't used before, made it better, improved it, and then drove in a load of different processes around like how to manage deployments and how to implement new technologies and all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of like a bit wish-washy. And is it all that important as well? So I've, I've, it's on my list of things to do today, but I might do it tonight when I'm on my laptop in, with Laura or something, watch a TV rather than now when I'm supposed to be doing some work. So it's 10 o'clock anyway. 10 o'clock is tea, tea o'clock in my world. Um, my plan is, I, I saw a habit of uh, something along the lines of like, every time you, if you've got things that you don't want to do, you should make a point of doing them every time you do something you always do. So if you go to the toilet, for example, come back, send an email, stuff like that. Um, and I think one of the things I'm gonna try and shift uh, into that is tea o'clock. So when you have tea, shift and do something else. Um, so I'm gonna go back to preparing um, some lead generation. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna start thinking about this pipeline thing. Um, and then hopefully by about lunchtime, I'll be back into some writing some code. So that'll be good, that'll be good. I'm trying to figure out what it is, because I used to, like use toggle to basically track what work I'm doing and when. Um, I'm trying to figure out what it is that I think is important enough to put into toggle. Cause I'm obviously gonna use this for billing and stuff. I'm using it for programming. But like now, like what I'm doing with LinkedIn, does this count? I feel like that doesn't really count. I should only, I should only log things that are a very specific task whether or not that task adds value, but log things if it's a very specific task. And then I can look at things over time where I'm not spending time doing a specific thing. Obviously I'm spending all day working, but where I'm not doing something specific and then I can try and investigate why that is. I'm trying to just like shine a light on what I spend time doing. And if I'm spending too much time on this or too little time on that, that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Right, so I think I've got my plan of attack. My plan of attack roughly from an architectural standpoint here is the repository service notifies the message bus, the event grid, whatever, uh, the message uh, raises an event to say that a code has been changed, uh, something's happened to the code base, and here's how you can go get it. The pipeline service registers that, and then it goes and builds a container image, container image, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me if I mess around with the right words. Um, container image. So it builds, basically, it builds a, that's why, I, that's why I thought image was wrong. What it does is it builds a Docker file programmatically um, based on the pipeline that it has and the source code uh, that's changed, builds a container image, spits that into my container repository. I'll then use something like a vent grid to automatically run the pipeline uh, in the cloud, tear it down, get the data out of it, that fires back to the pipeline service, which will then uh, like basically register the status, so how successful it was. Um, in the scenario where it's successful and we're ready to rock and roll and move on to the next service, we then publish out the details of what we just did. Um, 
and the content. See, this is the bit where I'm like, is that another microservice in its own? Um, but publish out the event of what just happened. I feel like the pipeline service should just be editing pipelines. Anyway, uh, so it pushes, I th think that's the correct way to go. Um, it pushes out what it just did to another service, which is then going to be where we start running all of the clever stuff. So at that point, once we've got like verification that it works, it then becomes available to be swarmed up in this other service, um, which will then use the existing image um, with different versions, effectively, um, and then it will do what it needs to do to spin up loads of different versions of that very same uh, image. So effectively, code change, one image is created, we have multiple versions of that image, and we run an instance of all of them. Um, so is the thing that runs the service, is that a separate microservice? I feel like it should be, because pipelines should exist to edit your pipelines, and then it should publish out its de details to another service. So that way, if for whatever reason that other service goes down, you can't edit your pipe. You can edit your pipeline still. If for whatever reason you can't edit your pipelines, in which case the event from repository service doesn't go into the pipeline service either. It goes to this third party service. So the, this service basically takes the repository service and the pipeline service. If either one of them go down, then you can't edit or you can't get updates for your repository. But we can still run the complicated stuff. We can still run that. That can still work on its own. Um, which also, arguably, is half something else anyway. <laughs> I just need to figure out, because the problem is that pipelines and building these Docker containers are very closely linked. Like, they're very similar processes. They'll have to know a lot about each other. Will they? They won't necessarily know, actually. I haven't thought about it. Um, but there will be a lot of mess... Like, the, the link between the pipeline service and this other service, if it if it does exist, is going to be quite a big link. This is the problem, by the way, with me working on my own, is I've got no one to bounce ideas off of. So I feel like it takes me longer to come to a conclusion than it would otherwise, because otherwise I'd just turn around behind me, talk to my owl here, but the owl will be able to talk back and have its own opinions. I'll be able to go, right, so here's one thinking, and think of this or this. What do you reckon? And then we can kind of come to a conclusion. But I've only got options of two things that don't talk to me in real time. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is, that I think this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. The question should be, is, does this live outside of the pipeline service? Or does it live within it? And to answer that question, I need to figure out how to get the data in such a format that we can programmatically generate Docker containers and whatnot in a different service which just means publishing messages out on the, on the message bus. But there's going to be quite a tight contract between those two. And I need to figure out a nice generic way of passing data across on the message bus. Um, generic data that could be quite complicated. Like, really complicated. Unless I actually have... Put, leave all the complication in the pipeline service, and the pipeline service basically generates out like the chunk you want, which probably makes sense actually. And then I just have, but then I have two services that are semi responsible for building pipelines, uh, for building Docker containers. Hmm. This is where like, it just gets complicated, like platforms of this size get really complicated really quickly. Like I've already got something like seven microservices seven microservices, some cloud functions, some blob storage, some databases, um, obviously a message bus. I'm going to be integrating API gateways, obviously a web front end as well. Um, and then I've got to build out event grids, more message services, Docker instances, and a Docker repository. <laughs> it's just like, it's like a fucking swarm. But the thing is, I need to figure out what, what I'm doing because I need to figure out how to... So I think what we should do is we should focus on having the pipeline service responsible for building the part of the container that can be pushed to another service, which will then wrap it in the stuff that it needs to know about. Does that make sense? Because effectively the images are... The images are a container 
of two things. So it's like their pipeline and my pipeline, and your pipeline is a part of my pipeline. Um, it's used as part of my pipeline, but it's not the same thing. So I effectively wrap it. That other service will be responsible for the bits that wrap it. That does highly depend on how you run the tests, because I haven't figured out how to get that data out yet. Um, but having said that, it needs to know about what the, it needs to know what type of pipeline it is anyway, so it can wrap it with the right dependencies. So why doesn't it do all of it? <laughs> right, so what we should do is we should have two separate microservices. We should live in the world where our microservices don't rely on each other to work. And one of the microservices quite blatantly is allowing the user to edit their pipeline configuration. That's fine, that could be separate. That's like editing a basket. The thing that runs the pipeline is different. That's like checkout on a website. The checkout on a basket is completely different. Your checkout can go down, but we'll still let you put things in the basket. We're, like We aren't able to run them at the moment, but you can still edit it and make changes if you want to. Um, that's all cool and above board. We should aim for microservices to be completely independent of each other so that they can run on their own right if they've been given the right data. There's always that caveat. Um, so once it's been given that data, this can just carry on. If the pipeline service is dead and it can't edit anymore, then we can still run them. And if we get notifications from the repository service, then we're running them, that's cool. Um, if the repository service goes down, then we can still run. We're just running on old stuff. <sighs> to be fair, that's, that kicks off the process. So if, if that goes down, it's like the first step in the chain. Um, but there isn't necessarily anything wrong with having a microservice and know a lot about another microservice. So having things like whether or not it's a .NET pipeline or not, um, that isn't necessarily very like wrong. It's not an argument for them to be the same thing. It's just an argument to really tightly link, control that link between the two of them. Um, it means that because if you, you what you don't want is a change in one of them to automatically affect the other. That's the thing you've got to try and defend against. And that's possible to be defended against. And that's better than having one big service that's doing both edits and building out these images. I think. Because then the pipeline service becomes responsible for figuring out the rest of the pipe. And then we end up with a huge monolith in the pipeline service. And I should abstract that away as best as possible into another service. Do I sound convincing? <laughs> I should eat my own words here because what I'm instinctively fighting between is um, having a microservice named around a domain, i.e. pipelines, which is a domain object that you can do multiple operations to. So you can edit them, you can run them, blah, blah. Um, what you should do always is set your microservices to be verbs so that they are doing things, they do stuff. They don't store things, that's database jobs. They do things. So your edit pipelines microservice is completely different to your run pipeline service, even though they both work in the same domain. Um, that was something that my last job, which I left yesterday, uh, they, they fell into when they first did their microservices. They built their microservices around domain database objects rather than operations. So they had, uh, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> but like hypothetically, we did it actually a couple of jobs ago as well. We made the same mistake very briefly. We uh, built out a service. We couldn't decide whether it was called new business or whether it was called... Um, something else like <laughs> it flipped it flipped towards new business where it was all it did was basically the new business application but to start with it was actually just your the thing you were applying for effectively and one of the actions upon that thing was applying for it um that was the wrong way around we did change to new business and we stored the data once you'd signed up into a different service so in a scenario where um our real service has gone down you can still get new business on the platform um Verbs, not nouns. Any of you guys got a guess on how long these videos start to get when now I've got no one else to talk to but you? Because they're going to get lengthy, I think. I'm trying to figure out when it's acceptable to uh, have lunch as well. Because previously, my, my other job, I had lunch at like 12, half 12. 
but I'd leave at four. Whereas here I'm kind of working longer days because I'm kind of working from like half past eight till basically six. So. Okay, so I think what I need to do is I need to, to carry on with basically allowing the user to specify what it's, um, how it's gonna run. Um, so it's steps that it's gonna do for, for build and test. Um, in the pipeline process, uh, keeping it with the basic stuff, keeping it limited um, basically to just .NET stuff um, so that effectively I just need to find out the configuration. Once I've got that, I can then start playing around with how to get the data out. Um, and then from there, I can start building out this build service. Um, so I think that's what we need to focus on next. I know this is possible. I've figured out, I've done my spike task, so I know how this is possible. I've figured out basically the technologies we're going to do to make it work. Um, but I've drawn it out now with four different services doing this stuff, and it makes sense to me, including the repository service. Um, that is probably also going to have an API, because like one of these services isn't going to have an API to it either. It's just going to be a consumer effectively on the message bus. Um, so, all right. Swaggity handy. I actually probably will have an API on it because it will need to define what it needs. The user might want to customize what they're doing, but anyway, not immediately they won't. So having said that, I've got something in my fucking eye. It is a pain in the ass testing microservices that don't have a bloody API. <laughs> so much more of a pain in the ass to put messages on a bus than it is to to talk to uh, the service directly. Um, I think it's lunchtime. Let's have lunch. It's, it's 10 to 12. I'm going to have some lunch and then we'll come back, uh, publish my, publicize my blog post and then we'll write some code. Write some goddamn code. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> it's time to get on with development. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out one thing. So I've, I've figured out what my next plan of attack is going to be. I'm going to add in some, um, what I'm calling templates, which define kind of the configuration for all of the steps that you can have in your pipeline. Um, I'm going to define the two step templates that I want for um, the steps that I'm going to do. The problem is, there's a minor problem with <laughs> where my office is, is that the sun comes around the back of the house. So it gets quite hot in there, basically. Um, but because I've emptied my office at work, I've got all the stuff I took at work to do. I've got a little desk fan now. <laughs> also got like my old keyboard and mouse, not that that's any value to me. But um, I've got them if I want them. Um, so yeah, I've got my little fan. He says, sitting here in a hoodie. Yeah, I'm gonna expose the, the step templates, which is what's used to define what's possible for the given step that you're trying to introduce. Um, that's my plan of attack. I'm gonna define those. I'm then gonna allow you to add to set steps on your pipeline, and then I'm gonna dive that out into this other service. So all of this drawing here, I'm probably not gonna even get to for the next, oh, I don't know, time scales anymore. <laughs> time scales are completely fucked now that I work every day. I'm gonna have to figure out what my like velocity is through these stories. Um, let's get down and dirty, write some bloody code, ladies and gentlemen. First bit of code I've written all day. In my last office, I was basically in the basement, like there was no light particularly where I was. Here, I'm gonna fucking suntan, boys, while I'm working. <laughs> Your boy Gary, who was a tester at my previous job, um, our only, well, no, I say that, we actually hired more testers, but he was the, um, our only tester for a long time. He was a tester that I hired while I was there. Um, he was just like, oh, I was just poking around on your website, and I've realised that the contactors page doesn't, does the contactors button doesn't work. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It doesn't work. I, I go on there, I click the button, it seems to work, go to the contact form, fill out the form, click on the email thing, it's all working fine. I message him like, what are you doing? He says, I'm going from LinkedIn. I'm like, right, LinkedIn, try the contact buttons there, they're fine, go through, click onto the site, works. And he's like, oh, it shows me a screenshot of it, this button, it's on his phone. Go onto my phone, right? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Here's my site, ladies and gentlemen. If you press contact us, it flashes the page, it just refreshes the page. It is loading, but it refreshes the page. Any of the other buttons work except that one, and only when it's on the blogs page. And I would guess, having just fixed the problem, if you're on pricing, yeah. So if you're on a sub page of another page, it wouldn't work, it would just refresh the page you're on. It doesn't do that in a browser. <laughs> it, it works correctly in a browser. So if you're on a desktop computer, it's fine. Um, but on mobile, it doesn't work. So that is my first ever 
live problem. We've had it, boys. <laughs> Day one. <laughs> I mean, arguably that's been there for a couple of months now, but that's by the by, isn't it? That's by the fucking by. I'm just, what I'm currently doing is deploying it to my development environment so I can log on with a phone to make sure it's fixed and then I'll deploy it to production. Um, I've got a, uh, effectively like a smoke environment, um, which is pretty nice, pretty goddamn nice, which I believe is, I'd never remember the URL for it because it's not obviously the same one. Right, there we go. Deployed the latest version works on all of the webs, on all of the pages. So if you go to uh, code views, price in, go to contact, works. If you go to the blog, someone keeps going to blog slash, no, sorry, uh, blogs slash blog. And it's like 404 in on my site and it's the only thing that for, like, I checked on App Insights to see what was happening um, and it was fine. Nothing was coming up except for that. Someone keeps doing it. I assume it's some kind of, bot or something but um yeah so thanks for that thanks gary so yeah my process for deploying stuff like that by the way it, it spins it up in a uh, a dev environment for me to use it i go on log on i can get in on my phone then because the problem is if i'm debugging on my computer it's a pain in the ass to get access with my phone uh so you deploy it to azure log in check it out uh it went once i've deployed to dev it raises a notification to mark for approval uh, I then have to mark, log in as my admin account, mark the, approve the deployment to production, and then uh, it deploys itself up to production. Um, yeah, so there we go. That was that was a dumb dumb bug. Literally one character too many. Let's merge the code and get back to what I was doing. Although it's coming up to the point where I might go for a walk. So my evening walk. Yeah, since I just switched context to fix that bug, um, now probably makes the most amount of sense. I've already let one fly out today. Are you, are you another one? Or have you come back in somehow, you little shit? Come on, get down. Yeah, since I've switched context a little bit to fix that bug, I am gonna go out for a walk. Now, I'm, I'm like, to a certain extent, I'm not trying to be religious about the, the time that I go. I'm trying to do it around the same time I'd normally commute anyway, but where it makes sense because um, if I've got time to do something before it or after it, then it makes more sense. So my plan is go for a little walk, come back, um, carry on with this work until Laura gets home. Also means I'm here so I can put the pasta bake in the oven. I've got pasta bake now. Um, let's go for it. Wonder? A little pierce around block. And this vlog is long, isn't it? How long is it so far? Oh yeah, damn. Maybe we're gonna end up going back daily, boys. Maybe. I'm not sure how. <laughs> Well, it depends. Obviously, the novelty is still pretty high, but the amount of work that we do over the next couple of days is going to start. Because it takes me more than one day to do something, basically. So, um, I won't have big updates for you every single day. Hey, Google, what's the weather like outside? It's going to be fun um, experimenting, trying to find out what kind of loop I can do in 30 minutes. Because, um, like, I, I did that in Bath, so when I was in... Um, both bath jobs. Um, I used to leave at lunchtime and then see what kind of walk I could do in 30 minutes or an hour if it was my other, my old job. Um, and in Bath you can get really far because Bath's really small but Bristol's way bigger <laughs> and it's a bit more like rabbit warreny. So you feel like you're going further than you are and then you end up back, at, back too early. So I need to be like, I can get to Bath City Centre from my old job in like about 30 minutes. So that's a long way. <laughs> so I can go a long way out if I want to. Um, I'm just experimenting, you know, I'm having fun. I'm out here thinking about a message I received on LinkedIn. I'm like, do I take that or not? Should I push it? See where it takes me? The answer to all of these things is nearly always yes, right? <laughs> Especially if you're not sure. If you're not sure about it, say yes. Um, <laughs> unless you, you've got to be definitely sure it's a no to say no. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. Laura's on the bus home now, so I'm putting dinner on. So far, I've done basically seven hours of work. I say basically, seven hours of work. <laughs> Literally, that's like my toggle of all time. So the amount of time that I, I timed in the timer was seven hours so far. Um, and I've just come downstairs to sort this out and then I'll go back upstairs and do some more while I'm waiting for Laura to come back. So, but I won't get much more no for now. Um, it's been quite a productive day today. I'm quite proud, proud of myself. Time does definitely fly longer than you think think but like a full work day at work programming wise we always pitched it about five hours once you've taken meetings out 
obviously I've not been doing just programming. Um, I've been doing like things in general, so I should be much closer to the amount of time that I'm supposed to be spending. Um, but I think that's good. First day. Bear in mind I haven't timed everything, so happy days. I've used basically an entire camera battery today on this video. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, not every day is gonna be as long as this, I promise. I won't have time to upload them. Um, I'm not playing the hour game, but eight hours of timed work today. Um, so it's, it's funny, because you've got to kind of like balance, you've got to balance like having a work-life balance <laughs> and also this has to work, fam. Like there isn't a, <laughs> I haven't got a safety net anymore. So like, I've got to keep the pace. I've got to keep the pace running. Um, and plan A, and my plan B, which is, which, uh, plan A is bootstrapping, plan B is venture capital. Um, <laughs> I've got to keep them both spinning, basically. Um, and try and like keep forging forward. I can't just rest on my laurels. So I was like, I almost came, finished dinner and came into here and I was like, oh well, what do you want to do? I can't just sit here and vegetate just because I'm, doing my work during the day now doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop doing it at night. Um, I used to work 10 hours, uh, 8 hours or 10 hours a day. Now I'm going to spend 10 or 8 hours a day actually working on my thing rather than someone else's thing. Um, rather than, oh, I can go down to just having a full-time job <laughs> um, and that'll do. Because it might not do. I need every time, every moment I can get still. I don't need to do my sleeping pattern anymore. I don't need to do this or this, but we'll get there. It's exciting times, guys. I'm really glad that I can take you on the ride with me as well, because this is like, this has been the dream. Start my daily vlog, initially did my daily vlog so that I would force myself to do interesting things every day. And then went, hey, you know what? I can do school, university, school, university, job, my own business. Like, okay, that's a good trajectory, you know? Um, up until the point where it doesn't make sense for me to carry on doing this because the things I won't be able to talk about the things I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so good times. Um, I've had a great day. Go to bed because I've got work tomorrow. Still not sunk in. I'll catch you later.